Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our uh, Lion Fight Zoom Chats. This is a, a bit of a special edition as it will be our final episode before uh, Lion Fight 63 taking place on February the 12th. And it's our first event on UFC Fight Pass. We're, of course, joined by Nathan Corbett and Justin Kwan handling all the controls. Uh, what makes this edition special is it is... Not really Nathan's picks to win because of, of course, being the uh, ringside analyst, he has to be fair and, and uh, impartial, but uh, we sort of handle it in terms of we take both fighters in, in a certain fight and we kind of break it down into what each fighter has to do to win. So uh, Nathan, thank you again for joining us. And let's start with uh, one of the feature bouts on the Line Fight 63 card, and that's Washington DeSantos against LT Nelson. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that you've seen uh, Washington before. This will be his second fight with Lion Fight at a more comfortable weight division. Uh, the debut of LT Nelson uh, with Lion Fight, but he's been around the block a, a lot in various uh, disciplines of, of combat sports. Your take on, I guess, let's start with what Washington has to do to win and then what LT has to do to win. Yeah, no, thanks, Scott. Well, exactly. Like, it's it's not a prediction. It's just more of like, okay, well, these are some potential opportunities that I could see that each fighter could have as their strength. Um, you know, not not absolutely knowing every one of them. You know, like, I know Jake Peacock pretty well, obviously, calling three of his fights. I could, you know, write a book on Jake because I know him so well. But the rest of the fighters, some of them we haven't seen online fight before, so it's going to be their first big appearance, especially on UFC Fight Pass. But, yeah. Um, yeah, the first, the first, uh, like I said, fight with Washington DeSantos. I think I feel like, especially after watching his um, his first fight, you know, he's a southpaw, which you know makes him difficult as far as the range. He's got that long. He's quite tall. We know he's going up in weight for this fight, as as we've spoken. I spoke to him a few weeks ago on the phone. He's feeling a lot better at that fight weight, so we know he's going to have the strength and the confidence um, to match that. So I feel like. For him to win this fight, what he needs to do is use that range. As a southpaw, it's one of the strengths that we have, use that range. But however, um, you know, I do know that he's been working on his Thai boxing game, which is obviously including the clinch and the elbows. So he's got it from both sides. But I feel like um, for him, it's really using that range is for his advantage, uh, whether it's over the distance of five rounds or whether he ends up tagging him, uh, you know, in the mid fight but using that distance, but then when he does throw, use aggression and throw with a lot of, you know, wanting to hurt um, Nelson, of course. So if he just wants to score on points, uh, maybe won't do so well, but I think the southpaw range and when he throws, he throws with bad intention. So that's how I feel like uh, Washington could get the win. Uh, Nelson, on the other hand, you know, he's, he's very, as we know, you know, uh, diverse in, in the fact that he's fought in bare knuckle and boxing and kickboxing and Muay Thai and, and MMA and all different things. Um, from what I've what I've learned about him, you know, he's more of a distance fighter, likes to throw combinations um, and obviously, you know, probably catch them in after three, four, five combinations and get them on the six, seven. So I feel like for him, um, you know, he's going to probably have to win the fight over five rounds, especially if he's that style of a fighter where he's going to have to rack up those scorecards. Can he, can he get in on a southpaw? Um, he's going to have to bridge in, use that um, experience from, you know, fighting, fighting multiple different talents. So that way someone like Washington, who is quite, you know, unique and a little bit awkward in some way, being that he's, you know, had that diversity with all different fights, he might be able to read the play easier. He's going to have to win the fight by, being relentless and never really stopping because he's saying if he if he stays out in the long range with that distance kick from Washington, he's going to get kicked off all night. So he's going to have to probably engage and try and throw those combinations and hope to catch uh, Washington with one of those strikes. That's that's how I think he's going to have a good chance of winning the fight. Of course, it's a prediction. Anything can happen. And uh, we'll know, of course, come fight night. 
All right, uh, let's move on to the featured women's bout on the card. Uh, a really interesting matchup uh, with Candace Mitchell against Natalie Morgan. Uh, again, Nathan, one fighter you've seen live in Candace Mitchell. Mm -hmm. You've seen her fight Whit uh, Whitney Tobin for the North American title and a newcomer in Natalie Morgan. Uh, but we've got to know Natalie over the last couple of months. And, and I think you probably have some insight into her game plan too. Yeah, yeah. So I might, I might actually start with Natalie as well. Like Natalie Morgan, of course, um, new, new to the line fight roster here and super excited to get back in the ring. She's had a small, not, not a long break off, but she's, you know, she's hungry to get back in there. For her, I feel like the win's going to be about her aggression. You know, the aggression, the power, you know, living up to her kill face name, being in there. She likes to use the elbows, kind of smothering the range doing what's required on the long range, but also jumping in there and using that aggression, uh, that stamina, maybe the youth in some way to, to, to get over the top of Candace. So for me, I feel like for Natalie, her win strategy is really to put that pressure on her and break her and not give, um, not give Candace the range. So okay. speaking about Candace Mitchell, as we know, she's got legs that go for, for miles. She's <laughs> super tall. She can use them. She uses them well. So I feel like for Candace, the best option for her to win the fight is to use those tip kicks, use those push kicks, use the distance, score the kicks, score the points from the long range and try to, um, you know, spoil the attacks, but also staying active on the outside, you know, not just moving around, not doing anything, but actually staying active, using a high work rate with her kicks and keeping the distance. So that's how I feel like um, with that, uh, with, uh, sorry, with Candice uh, Mitchell, how she could, definitely you know overcome natalie and get the win if she sticks to that game plan okay all right uh let's move on to the uh co-main event uh of course uh, fighter that you brought up a little bit earlier jake peacock you're well aware of his skill set and what he brings to the ring and then i know you've had a chance to talk to his opponent uh, kima diop uh, kind of get the lay of the land with him and it's a very intriguing matchup between two guys who are um, I, I guess maybe just the, they are intriguing fighters. They're, they're, they're guys that I'm really curious to see what they can do. Yeah. Yeah. Kim and Diop, you know, it's going to be interesting. You know, he's, he's, they're actually, I think pretty much the same age. They're both really hungry. They're both sort of super. They're both like, 27. So yeah. There you go. They're both 27. They're both really super excited to, you know, to be able to get back over the ropes and fight again. Um, where I think that, that Diop, you know, really needs to, what he needs to do is if he, if he can handle, um, if he can, if he can handle the confusion, like I've, I've watched Jack Peacock fight so many times and, 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 and with his arm being short and he holds it up like this, it's quite confusing for the opponent. They kind of get a little bit off put by it. They're not too sure if they can come in and they come in and he strikes with it and he's changing stance. So um, really Diop needs to, you know, make sure that he doesn't get confused with Jake's range and ability. Um, and of course, um, you know, by, by not being confused by that arm, you know, obviously attacking, attacking, attacking and, and racking up the points. I'm not sure, you know, if he can win um, against Jake by a knockout. I think that, you know, Jake's got that versatility and that um, also he's, he's, he's tough as well. So he's going to really have to work hard for the win. Um, and not be confused, but he definitely has a great, good possibility of doing that with this skill set that he has uh, and coming from a great camp, of course. And um, yeah, I feel like, you know, just, just using his, his smarts, using his kicks and, and the, the, the secret for his win is to not get confused by Jake's style. And also, um, like I said, with that arm, it can really confuse. I've seen it confuse so many fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, the last three shows where he puts it up there like that, you like, and they're like, "Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna attack him in the body. I'm just gonna hit him right. in the body." And all of a right. sudden, bang, 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 yeah, they get knocked out. So, as long as he can um, bypass or get past that thing. So, I mean, a lot of fighters, obviously, when they um, go to fight Jake, they've either got two mindsets, like you know, you know, he's only got the one, you know, the one arm in a sense. So, you know, I can overcome on that side, or like you know, oh. You know, there's the pressure of, well, I have to beat him because he has, hasn't got the full, you know, the full limbs. So it's one of those things. But, um, of course, the fight's been matched. He's taken the fight, and um, that would be great. So, on the other hand, coming off, of course, is Jake. Um, I mean, if he just keeps doing what he's been doing, that's where he'll win. You know, he switches stance so well. He mixes his ranges. He's going high. He's going low. He's going to the midsection. 
you know, he is confusing people with his stance, with his arm. He confuses people with his techniques. He sometimes whips out a karate straight stab kick, then he go back to a tight leg kick, and then he can clinch up. You know, he likes the fake stance and then rip to the body with his left hand. So he's just got so many different skills there. So I feel like if, you know, Jay can just keep doing what he's doing and keep switching up the levels, then that'll, you know, that'll be enough for him to um, get another win. What I like about both guys too, is they have a diversified attack, you know, with Keeman's uh, two wins inside the lion fight ring. Uh, you know, one was uh, a head kick. One was punches with Jake. It's, you know, a head a highlight reel head kick knockout uh, predominantly uh, body shot work against Lee Walton. And That's then, right. uh, you know, against Ryan Houston, it was sort of a little bit of everything. It was really well, me that finished shot. it. Yeah, Houston, he hit him with that body shot that yeah. hurt him first, and then he obviously he you know finished him with that knee. But you know that body shot was the damage. So exactly, he's got all he's got all levels, just like uh, Diop has. And that's the that's the exciting thing about this fight. And, and even when I'm sitting down writing this thing and I'm talking about this thing, it's like, well, you know, what do I really know? And I can tell they actually get in there and start fighting. We won't, we won't know. But just from you know from knowing both a little bit and just seeing a little bit, okay, I feel like okay, this is what he probably has to overcome. This is what he has to overcome. So. Uh, for Jake, what does he have to overcome to get the win? Um, you know, maybe maybe someone like uh, Diop who has that height, maybe he hasn't fought someone with that much range before. Uh, maybe he has in the past in the amateur career, we don't know. But from what I've seen, yeah, he's usually pretty much on par with height. But I think he, this one, he might have a little bit on him. Um, so we'll see. But uh, and, that's And Diop's part. a bigger guy. Is, is generally speaking a bigger guy. He's got longer limbs and he's coming yeah, yeah. down from 155, you know, so he's yeah. a bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger, a little bit tall, a little bit longer, um, potentially maybe a little bit more experienced. So it's, it, it's obviously a fight that we're all, we're all excited for. So yeah, that's, no my, that's, my, that's my takeaway for, for the win for both of them. So let's go to the main event then. And I know uh, a fight that you're very interested in, of course, it's Chris Trammell against Hassan Oseni for the Lion Fight North American Cruiserweight title. Uh, again, a super intriguing matchup. You've got Trammell, who's been through all of, you know, just life's uh, a huge saga with him about being able to get back and being into uh, getting to this point to being able to continue fighting. And then you have Oseni who, yes, is, is maybe a, what would some people would consider a, a, a late change, but uh, perhaps a tougher opponent in the end for Chris. So um, it, it's a really interesting matchup. And, and I think there's going to be plenty of fireworks. Yeah, exactly. And I'll, 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 and I'll start with Chris, you know, because I was really mm -hmm. giving it thought last night. And I thought, okay, what what is it that he needs to, you know, to obviously win? And I think he needs first he needs to fight smart, and um, and and hopefully he doesn't allow the pressure of this whole, you know, thing. We spoke about, you know, with him on one of these um, Zoom calls, you know, how he said he doesn't, you know, he's fine with the pressure. And I believe he is, but as long as that pressure, when the time comes and the lights go on and the ring steps over, and that pressure doesn't allow you know him to i don't know like you know tense up maybe or something so i feel like that's one of the things he has to be careful of um use his full range of weapons you know he's quite very diverse with his muay thai you know he taught muay thai over in thailand he, he knows muay thai well he likes to clinch he likes the elbow he likes to punch he's flexible is how he can do the splits he can kick low he can kick high so as long as he's using all those weapons and then doesn't just sort of get sucked into the fight where he's just like, I just got to, I got to knock the guy out. I got to knock the guy out. Um, so I feel like for him, it's his, his win will come from relaxing into the fight with enough pressure to obviously, you know, do damage. Mm -hmm. you, you utilize his actual experience um, with as man, especially because it's some Muay Thai fights, like kickboxing fights, the Thai boxing fights, what he loves. He's good at the clinch. He, he knows how to elbow. Um, so that's going to be, you know, I feel like Chris's way to win is by doing those things. On the other hand, of course, uh, Osani, um, you know, I feel like for him, he needs, he really needs to use his power. He's quite a big hitter. Mm -hmm. You know, he's come down from heavyweight um, to this sort of like, you know, not super heavy, but like he's come down from a heavier weight down to the yeah. cruiser division. So he's carrying a lot of power, a lot of punch with that. Um, I feel like if he can, you know, be be intelligent in the first few rounds, and then really pick up the fight in the, in the later end of the fight, in the later rounds of the fight. That is his way to his win because he's little, he's been a little bit more active over these last few years, where where you know Chris hasn't had a fight I think for five years, something like that, right? 
or a few years at least. So, you know, I feel like in some way uh, that's where Os uh, Asani needs to, you know, get his win from the fight is because Chris is going to come in strong for those first two, three rounds. You know, can he, can he handle it? Can he, even though know, the training that we're doing is enough, can he make it to the end uh, with the experience of Sony being in maybe a couple extra fights before this fight leading up to it? And um, yeah, using his power and obviously, you know, taking the fight deeper into the later rounds. Chris has used uh, the terminology before that, uh, you know, one way or another, you know, he's going to, uh, if he goes out, he's going out on his shield or he's going to go for the knockout, you know, that, that sort of mentality. How yeah. fine is the line between uh, going for an impressive uh, finish and, and a resounding finish? How fine is the line then between fighting silly and, and, and making mistakes? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, what he's really what he's trying to say is that, you know, he's putting it all on the line. He's not going to go in there and, you know, teep and run away and try and score points to just get a just get a win, you know, just grasp mm -hmm. a win because of points. He's going to go in there and throw down. You know, he wants to, he, I don't like to use the word hurt, but he wants to hurt his opponent. You know, he wants yeah. to knock his opponent out. He wants to finish his opponent. So he's putting it all on the line as far as that. He's putting on, he wants to, you know, like you said, it's either, you know, win, lose or die. <laughs> uh, mentality and I feel like it's it's a perfect way for him to go whether whether he gets to win whether he doesn't we won't know until the night but it's the perfect way him for him to go out there and take this fight like that and that's why it's kind of exciting that the opponent changed um to to Hassan because he also is a you know is a big banger um, and will probably more or less not have the ability to jump around the ring and run around. Right. He's more heavy set, so he's not going to be a light guy who's going to be springing off the ropes and running around. He's going to be like, I'm right here, let's fight. And then they can just, you know, be in, you know, like Titans in the middle clashing with each other. And whoever gets the one shot on or one or whatnot and defends or moves around or doesn't gas the first one who might <laughs> gas might end up losing the fight too. So, it's hard to say, but it's going to be exciting. I definitely know it's going to be fireworks in that fight. Nathan, really quick, uh, whether it's a title fight or the first fight on Fight Pass, whatever that may be, a piece of advice from you to fighters as they prepare for that big moment. Yeah, look, my piece of advice is it, it is it is a pre it, it, there is pressure involved in being the first time on UFC Fight Pass. But what you need to do is you're not you need to not use that pressure to make it um you know more you know like you know i guess bringing you down in the sense that it's too much pressure can't handle and shut you down you, you need to take that opportunity and go okay look there is a pressure here there is i'm not going to say there isn't there is but this is my time this is my okay. time to shine. this is my time to step through and that's what separates you know winners from losers or from average to champions or people sure. who can't quite get there is they they have to perform when the lights are on. Like there's no point being a champion in the gym. You need to perform come fight night. So let's, let's just say it like this. You have your five rounds. You haven't had a fight in two years or 12 months or six months or whatever it might be. But with COVID, it's at least been a year. So you got five rounds in one whole year. You better show up. <laughs> yeah. Th this is definitely because you the might time not for get that. another five for six months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we don't know. So you better make sure that you make every second of every round of every minute of every round count because there ain't no second chance and you must turn up and you must not be cold. There's no excuse for cold. It's hot. And I don't mean in the temperature because it's going to yeah. be cold. But I mean that you bring the fire. Oh, you don't, I don't want to hear, oh, you know, I just couldn't fire up tonight because... Mm -mm. You've had one year to change that mindset. You've had one year to prepare for it. So there is no excuses. So you better show up. Nathan, thank you so much for this. We are hours away from Lion Fight 63, the debut on UFC Fight Pass this Friday, February the 12th. It's going to be awesome. And we can't wait. And the three of us will be back after the event to give you a rundown as well. So we will see you soon.